say, are you you're in the middle of the tour at the moment, aren't you? Just about to start one. Just about to yeah. start it? Yeah. Are you nervous? Not really. No. It's a bit, well, I mean, it's as much as I should be, it's good to be a little bit nervous, but I'm kind of more excited just to be um, touring around the UK, which I haven't really done much of here, so yeah. it's going to be cool, yeah. And is it, I guess it must be nerve-wracking, because you're still in a band now, it's just you and some of the on stage, do you feel a bit more apprehensive about it? I think I did it first, um, but it was kind of, I've already been kind of do, doing this this kind of show with EJ for the last year and a half now, so it's kind of that that sort of side of it's worn off, and now it's kind of just trying to, feeling nervous about trying to make each show unique and different and stuff like that, but it definitely was, to begin with, really um, strange to be the only person on stage, because when I first started it was completely just me, and you do feel like you've got to hold everybody's attention and give, you know, four people's worth of energy or something. And then, you know, do you have any like pre-stage rituals? Anything surreal you do, or do you just get really drunk? Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of it's all of the above, really. Sometimes you, you know, whiskey is always a good ritualistic, ritualistic thing that doesn't seem to kind of like you're just getting drunk. Whiskey somehow holds some kind of almost uh, spiritual time. Yeah, keep telling yourself that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your new album, um, I'll Be Lightning, uh, you wrote some of it in New Zealand, didn't you, and some of it in London? Yeah, most of it I, I wrote over here in London, but um, recorded it back in New Zealand, so it's kind of got that balance of, of both hemispheres. Was it a happy time in London? Uh, yes and no. I mean, it was definitely the songs have got a melancholic, you know, quality to, to them, and a lot of things living over here in London were um, quite eye-opening and humbling, but um, I guess that's kind of good for a bit of inspiration and a bit of angst, you know? Definitely. But angst never hurt anyone. Do you think that your location does dictate how you write songs quite a bit? I think it just di dictates how your life is and if it depends what kind of songwriter you are and I definitely, you know, seem to write from experience and, you know, so yeah, it's probably quite, you know, quite a big part of, of how I write, yeah. And have you been writing songs since you were really tiny, obviously, with your dad's influence? Yeah, I guess so. Everywhere yeah, I, I guess I never really thought about it because it seemed like the it seemed like it was the normal thing to do. Because my dad and my uncle did it. And, but yeah, I, I wasn't probably till I was um, you know 13 or something that I started trying to write songs that sort of were actual songs. You know, that weren't just kind of strange little like, nursery rhyme like a child. You know, imagination things. Yeah. Can you remember your first song you ever wrote? I wrote a song. Um, it was, it was called The Burglar Song, and it was about a burglar breaking into my house and falling through the roof, and then he said he was a nice burglar, and he was a nice burglar, and he was supposed to go to jail, but he came to my house, and then he went home and had some lemonade. That Is that true? Yeah, that was the lyrics. Well, it didn't actually Oh, happen. I thought it actually yeah, no, happened. Yeah. Like, it's only recently I've written from experience. That was, you know, <laughs> I haven't had that much experience yet. I think I was quite fascinated by burglars, though, because it was like quite a few things I seemed to do about like lots of, you know, I used to draw burglars a lot. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's, Would that have been your other career path, do you think, if you hadn't become a musician? <laughs> Maybe. It's still, you know, it still could happen. We'll uh, it your album is out this month. Um, are you slightly worried about people's, uh, when they get to hear it and the public's opinion of it, or are you kind of like stunned so that you don't care about it anymore? Uh, I feel like a good sort of, well, not a distance from it, but. Um, I guess I'm just happy to have it out and that was kind of my goal to begin with was, you know, after living here for a few years and, and having a band for so long and finding it pretty hard to just even get a release internationally, it was sort of just my goal to go and make this record the way I wanted to do it without anybody else in mind and then hopefully just through it, the sort of, I guess, art aspect of it and being, you know, something that I believe in, hopefully getting it released throughout the world and it's now all kind of come together and so I, I guess I feel just quite Set, quietly satisfied with that, but um, I hope people like it. You know, obviously I want, I want people to like it, but if they don't, then I'll, I'll have something to be upset about and write another record about. Yeah. 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 And I guess there's more weighted expectations because like, you did everything on your own, and it's your name on the front cover of the CD, so it's like, oh, everything yeah. comes back to you. It's a very personal thing yeah. to, for someone to criticise songs that do mean uh, a lot to you. I, think. I, I guess I sort of had moments of, of, of learning how to deal with that with my band and stuff like that and you know, you're always going to get good reviews and you're always going to get bad reviews but it's just one person's opinion and I, I'm just kind of happy to play live and see the people that I'm performing to enjoy and that's kind of hopefully, you know, all I have to deal with is the, is the positive side of it. 
And I know you did literally do everything yourself, like right? so you did the artwork and promotional yeah. shots and stuff like that. Is that because you know it was your baby and you wanted to do everything around, on, on your own? Should be letting you film this and actually yourself. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I guess it was. It's probably a, you know. I probably am a bit of a control freak, but that's I think mostly because I I really enjoy all the aspects of making music and, and you know the photos and that just sort of it's that seems like the fun part to me. It's all the creating and all the being in control and all that side of it. So I I guess I just I, I had my heart set on sort of doing it the way I wanted to do it, but that didn't necessarily mean doing everything myself, that just kind of happened somehow, you know, I don't even remember how that happened, just happened. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, um, if you were going to be in any other band in the whole world, what would it be and what, what, what position would you care about? Oh man, if I could be in any band, I'd probably like to be in the Sonic Youth, that'd be pretty good fun, because it'd be an element of just experimenting and doing, you know, making as much extreme noise as you can, but also just being around such other amazing things and stuff. So, I don't know, I guess I'd, I'd quite like to just be a, play some weird instrument in that band. So, like, I play the theremin and some of youth, that would be good. I've got a, a little theremin, and that's something that I, you know, I'm not necessarily very. Um, Don't you take that for piles? What's that? A theremin. No. What is it? It's a some strange device that has a rod that is like a tone generator that the closer you put your hand to it, the different tone it makes, so it's sort of like Oh, oh right, cool. It's a very fun instrument to play. I'm good at making noises on it, I'm not very good at playing it in the shoe or anything like that. <laughs>